and I will talk about complex connection design according to the Eurocode rules. Um, Uh, my name is Josef Solai. I'm the technical director of Constia Solutions. I will make this presentation now. Just for some practical information, uh, you can hide the control if it, it is too large and uh, use the chat, uh, chat options here if you have uh, any message for me. And the content will be uh, first about just basics about constant joint software then uh, I will review the connection types what we can calculate and design uh, I show how to create a complex joint model including several different connection types how to design them uh, how to modify them manipulate them uh, and how to document uh, the results and then uh, I will show you in Constil how the structure connection interaction works uh, and I will show you how can we export a model including connections to Tecla structures so uh, let me start Const joint. What we see here is the introduction screen. We can make new model or we can open model. These are the previous model what can be chosen. Now I choose a previous model called joint types. And on this model, I would like to show you the different possibilities in Consti joint. These are the uh, basic functions. First, to create new joints. The second is we can uh, see the details of a selected joint configuration. We can copy the joint. We can delete. Uh, we can document. And we can set default settings. Let me show you connection types. Basically, there are two basic objects in, in a constant joint. The joint is a, a larger entity which can have several different connections. Now it is a beam to column joint in which on the flange we have a moment and plate connection and on the web on both sides we have simple plate connections so it is working as one joint sorry but I hear some voice so I have to unmute okay so these are the beam to column joint uh, this is a hunched frame corner joint. This is a bracing connections on the web of a column with uh, different uh, bracing elements like angle sections or uh, uh, hollow sections. Fin plate connection on a column uh, flange or web. This is uh, uh, also a bracing connection and a moment end plate uh, a beam connection. This is very typical in industrial, uh, heavy industry buildings. Uh, and a simple shear connection. Then we have beam splice joints uh, with same connection types. with the moment connection and splice plate connections. We can have uh, beam to beam joints. This is the uh, fin plate in both sides with different 
shapes or can be simple plate shear plate connections or moment and plate connections with stiffeners and we have several bracing uh, types uh, connections placed on usually a, on a gusset plate including these splice plate connections for uh, hollow sections or with tension bars eye bars so these are basing some ba bracing possibilities then we can have a column based joints this is the uh, moment and plate moment base plate uh, uh, joint this is a rigid base plate or pinned uh, base plate joint and we have a hollow section joint for truss structures the uh, uh, cords can be eye shaped or hollow sections or tube sections and K, N, T or Y uh, possibilities we have according to the Eura codes it is automatically evaluated and it can be a multiplanar truss joint as well so in two planes and it can uh, rectangular or tube sections so these are the basic possibilities uh, now I show you how to create a joint and uh, uh, how to collect several connections on the same joint so I click on the create button I have to give a name we can uh, choose the settings for the joint what can be previously uh, modified or, or created and in the next button we have to choose the basic joint type these are the basic types what I showed you earlier so now we choose the beam to column joint next stage is defining the connection types on the column you can see that we can uh, uh, define four connections on both flanges and on both sides of the web so let me do first uh, uh, and moment and plate connection on the right flange we can choose a section for it let me choose IP 400 for the uh, beam okay we can set here also the column section that's AG for uh, 340 on the left flange uh, we can choose from these types of connection let me choose this fin plate with uh, another cross section types type it is IP uh, 300 and on the web uh, let me choose uh, bracing connections uh, like this with uh, with the uh, hollow sections on one side okay and on the other side again bracing on gusset plate on the middle let me choose the same this can be compression posts and maybe I set the lower edge uh, round bar it's a tension bar okay so now I created the joint configuration and I push the create button and we can see now the whole joint what we uh, previously selected for cross sections and for connection types so this is the moment and plate connection this is the gusset plate connection with the compression post and the tension bar this is the fin plate beam connection and this is the other compression post uh, connection 
and now I can start to manipulate the joint or this uh, the uh, plates the boards the weds are coming from the default settings what uh, can be previously set by the user or using the default uh, arrangement uh, we should modify it accordingly so uh, let me make an intermediate story here and first we can set the joint loading we can input loading as a new one we can set several load cases if we have more we don't have if we don't have a relevant load case we can set more and always the dominant relevant one which will be governing for the design and here we can see all the connection details uh, connection components for which we have to define loads so the left flange is the fin plate connection which can have only shear all the others are forbidden only the shear can be defined here the second is the right one here we can define no more force shear force and bending moment as well so this is a moment and plate connection uh, web front middle this can be a compression post so a negative value means that it has a compression then on the tension bar some tension here again on the compression and we can define load on the column as well something so we have now the loads if we have loads then automatically every connection is calculated this is the uh, main window of a constant joint these are the area where we can choose the connection type which uh, we want to work with and the different components here are the uh, parameters of the components so the geometry the bolt type material etc this is the 3d graphic of the of our uh, connections and joints and this is the area for the results so uh, on the results uh, area we can choose these options summary of the results of the whole joints including all the uh, uh, connections it starts with the checks there are warnings and errors errors means that there are something serious uh, mistake which means that the connection cannot be calculated cannot be evaluated now we don't have such errors we have only warnings uh, now it, it warns us that the gusset plate buckling is not checked here and here and then we can see the uh, summary of the results for all the connections on the right flange we have this moment and plate connection we can see uh, all the calculated values in the summary and what we can see that the moment resistance is not adequate the utilization is very very high and also the wear utilization is high we will improve it later on the left flange we have a fin plate connection we have only shear resistance this is the dominant components the bolts in shear it is also not adequate at the moment with this uh, default arrangement of bolts and plates then web front middle edge this is here on the middle edge we have this compression post we have uh, these uh, summary of the results on the lower edge we have the uh, tension bar connection and we have the web back uh, connection so these are the summary of the results we can choose the summary of the results only for the selected connection if we want to deal only with uh, one connection 
So, for example, first we want to uh, want to improve the moment and plate connection. Then you can see that we see this right flange connection here. We see all the results for this connection. What are these results? We have two default load cases, a positive loading and a negative loading. It is important for moment connections when the connection is not symmetric. We can see that the moment resistance is not the same for positive and for negative bending moment. But if we have a load case, automatically the relevant uh, resistance is calculated, which is now the positive. And we can see that if we have a load case, then we have utilization values as well. So as I mentioned, the moment utilization is not adequate. Shear resistance is adequate. Wed calculation is not adequate. We can see here the stiffness as well. The class is semi-rigid. The strength, class of strength is partial strength at the moment. And we can see here the dominant compression and dominant tension components. These are the governing components from the evaluation. So we can see that the weakest component from in the compression is the column web in transverse compression at this uh, flange. And the dominant tension components in the highest boat row is the column flange in bending. So the bending of this column flange and the dominant uh, failure mode is the bolt failure. That is the elastic bolt tearing. And we can see here the dominant uh, 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 resistance forces for these tension and compression components. So these are the basic uh, summary of the results. If we want to see the detailed results, we can see here for the dominant load case, which means that it chooses, if we have several load cases that uh, the one is chooses which produces the highest utilization, we can see the default positive or negative loading, or we can select any load case what we have for see the result. So now we select the dominant, which is, of course, now the uh, first load case, what we have. And we can see the detailed results now. Starting from moment resistance, in, uh, <clears throat> uh, in every component, we can see the relevant chapter of the Euro code, the relevant uh, uh, section. Uh, and these are the compression components column web panel in shear, column web in transverse compression and beam flange and web in compression. And we can see the tension components from bolt row to bolt row. So for the first bolt row, we can see the lever arm and the four different com uh, uh, component uh, resistance, column web in transfer tension, flange in bending and plate in bending, beam web in tension. We can see the dominant one and the dominant failure mode. And the same for second boat row, we can see individual or boat row group one and two, and for all the others. And finally, this is the calculated moment resistance. The axial resistance is calculated here, but it is not uh, relevant now because we don't have axial force at the moment on the connection. We have the shear resistance, the different components, bolts in shear, the bearing resistance of the bolts and the weld resistance gives uh, the shear resistance. Now, the dominant is the bolts in combined shear and tension. And we have separately the weld resistance for uh, web upper flange and lower flange. These are not adequate. And finally, uh, if we have moment and plate connection, then we can calculate the stiffness of this com uh, of this uh, connection according to the Euro code chapters. This is also a component-based method and we can see finally these are the calculated initial stiffness and second stiffness which is uh, considers the applied moment and we can see the stiffness class that at the moment it is a semi-rigid connection. So now let me show you how we can improve our connection uh, by 
utilizing the results. So what we see now that uh, the utilization is very high. So first, I would like to uh, uh, make here a hunch on the beam. So we can see we have an IP 400 and with this button we can apply a hunch. We can apply on the top flange or on the bottom flange. Now I choose the bottom flange and hunch with flange and here we could set the uh, geometry of this hunch. This is the thickness of the web which is the same as for uh, the beam. So it is 8 millimeter. Then we can see the height of the hunch. We define it. Length of the hunch. Uh, thickness of the flange. Similar. And width of the flange it is 180. And we apply this. Okay, so the hunch is taken here. What we see that we have now errors, so the connection cannot be calculated, of course, because the basic error that lower end plane extension is not enough for the hunch flange weld. And for the whole, whole hunch, it is not enough. So we have to enlarge, of course, the uh, end plate. It can be due quickly by an update function. This update always tries to, uh, to improve our connection to be able to uh, 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 calculate it. So the update function now gives a bigger end plate and one more bolt somewhere in, the, in this region to have uh, for the hunch. And now we can calculate this uh, uh, connection again. What we can see that it is still not adequate but the utilization is half of course because we have a much larger uh, connection here. The stiffness class is still semi-rigid and we see now that it is of course more uh, uh, stiff. So how to strengthen now to uh, make a fully adequate connection? Let me start to analyze the dominant components. So the weakest part for compression is the column web in transverse compression. It is important because this compression uh, component can reduce the uh, forces on the tension components on the bolt rows. Okay. And uh, now it is 400 and 50 kilonewton and we can see that in the bolt row 4 there is no tension and even in the third uh, bolt row it is reduced by the column web. So this value is a reduced value because of the compression components. So uh, this is important to keep in mind that we should strengthen the compression components if we want to strengthen uh, uh, dominantly our co uh, connection. Let me see the tension components. It is column flange in bending. Usually if the column flange is the governing uh, we can strengthen the column flange by adding special stiffeners on the column flange. Stiffener or uh, supplementary uh, uh, flange plate. But uh, we can also use uh, another bolt row or what we can see here that the dominant uh, failure mode is bolt failure that means that the bolt is the weakest component this is elastic failure so if we choose a higher or higher material grade for the bolt here let's see it's 8.8 .8. then it's better the situation and now we can see that now the end plate in bending is the dominant one. So we can increase the thickness of the end plate here 
And at 20, we can see that again, both show failure and column flange in bending, but now it is 150. So let me again modify the bolt to uh, 10.9. Okay. And maybe I, I take here another bolt row. And what we can see now that only the first two bolt rows are in tension. The third, fourth, and fifth bolt row, so these ones, are have no tension because uh, the reduction from the component, uh, compression component. It is because of the equilibrium of the compression and tension forces. So now, if we want to increase the resistance of our uh, of our uh, connection, we have to increase the dominant compression component, which is now the column web in transfer compression here. What we can do here is apply a stiffener between the flanges. So stiffeners, we can use upper or lower transfer plate. Uh, here is the stiffener. If we choose to take here the bottom we have to assign it the stiffener to the hunch flange now it's there and we can see it's better the situation and now the dominant compression component is the column web panel in shear and still now I have something tension in bolt row 3 but still reduced by the column web panel in shear so we have to somehow increase the shear resistance of this web panel so we can choose the shear stiffeners. There are several shear stiffeners here which can be chosen. Maybe we choose this supplementary web plate and now we can see that our uh, connection is almost adequate. We can maybe arrange something about the bolts and now it's fully adequate. So uh, these are the basic functionalities for a moment end plate connection. We can use stiffeners on the column, uh, web stiffeners, flange stiffeners or shear stiffeners. Uh, we can use hunch on the beams. We can manipulate here the end plate, the boards and the board distribution, board spacing here and uh, we can make our connection adequate. What is still not good is the, is the WED utilization, which is very high. Uh, let's go to the WED here. What we see here is the different WED sizes. This is not the default, this is the minimum WED size. This, is, uh, this can be set by the user to add other, other value for the flange or web, but now it is taken as the minimum one. The wear design uh, can be based on the section resistance. That means that the wear should resist the whole resistance of the section. It is not really, uh, uh, this is quite a conservative method, uh, uh, especially if we have a partial strength connection, which means that uh, the connection uh, uh, resistance is lower uh, than the uh, uh, cross-section resistance, then of course the wedge shouldn't be uh, uh, the same as the cross-section resistance. But anyway, you, we can choose this, and of course the uh, there we can we can uh, get another utilization. We can choose the design load, which is now the uh, this load what is applied on our co connection or the weakest component. What does it mean, weakest component? The weakest component means that, for example, this upper flange uh, wedge should resist uh, only this uh, tension force coming from this area, from the first or first two bolt rows, because uh, this is a plastic force distribution and uh, not higher forces uh, taken to this web, only this. If we have an extended end plate, of course, these two 
um, two uh, bolts uh, resistance should be resisted by the uh, uh, flange wedge. The web wedge should be should resist the shear and the lower wedge should resist the compression components. Now we choose the design load. So we have now uh, uh, shear force and bending moment and we evaluate the wedge according to this. We have three options here. So we can we can increase manually here the uh, sizes of the wads, but we have three options. We can make the throat thaw thickness as half of the plate thickness. We can choose automatic wad optimization, and we can choose that linear stress distribution is considered on the web wad for bending resistance. That means this is a very uh, 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 good option if we want to reduce the wad size that we consider that the uh, web wads are not fully uh, utilized by the shear so the web wads has uh, more resistance to consider linear stress distribution for the moment so that means that the web wads can resist some moment and it will reduce the moment which is taken to the flange wad so now we choose this option then we can see that the utilization is with the same uh, uh, sizes is much lower here we can see the details in this case the web web utilization is near uh, 100 but still not enough for uh, for the moment and the flange uh, weds now we can choose the automatic wad optimization using this option and now we can see that the automatic wad optimization gave 4 millimeters for the upper flange wad and 5 millimeters for the lower hunch wad but at the moment it is uh, there is some error the upper end plate extension is not enough for the beam flange wad we can see here that this weld is larger so we have to improve our connection again we use again this update function and now we can see that everything is adequate so the bending moment utilization the shear utilization weld utilization is good no error and we can see here the detailed results so these are the basic functionalities how can we solve a moment and plate connection within a joint so let me show let me go on the connection and see now the fin plate connection this is the detailed results for the fin plate connection of course it is much uh, uh, the the results are uh, shorter because this is just a shear connection but we can see that it is not adequate uh, we can see the dominant component dominant components are the bolts in shear so maybe we have to apply more bolts in this fin plate so we go to the fin plate and we increase here the number of bolt rows to three and the distances we want to even a little bit it's 80 between okay and we can increase in decrease the height a little bit and now it's adequate now with three bolt rows so in shear resistance for fin plate the bolts in shear the bearing resistance the shear resistance of the fin plate, the weld resistance, shear resistance of the beam is checked. And now, uh, instead of the bolts, the dominant component is the shear resistance of the beam web, but it is adequate at the moment. Okay, this was the fin plate. Now we can go on to the gusset plate connections. So, uh, in this gusset plate connection, uh, we have 
two different connections uh, hollow section connection with a, a compression post and a tension bar connection what well, we can see that the hollow section connection is adequate uh, here we can see all the details what we see that the dominant component is the shear resistance of the bolts but it is acceptable maybe this utilization what is quite low is the wad utilization the wad maybe the wad is too long so we can go to the splice plate side here and we can shorten the wad size we can see here now the wad is too short so it is uh, under the minimum so we have to increase back and now it's good this is the minimum weld side but it is a higher utilization but still good of course and this is now the default arrangement we can uh, we can define here other values uh, to to make it uh, with different uh, 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 geometry it's, yes and we can see again this is not appropriate yeah well boy this is too short ladies yeah this is yeah so we can we can manipulate here the uh, connection and the boards as well now we use M12 boards with this board grade but it is adequate for this so let me show you the lower edge splice plate connection uh, this is a tension bar we can see the default arrangement uh, the utilization is quite low we can change here these are the possible configuration for all splice plate connections even for this uh, uh, this type of polo section so we can choose this this one with two plates or this is or this one so there are four configuration types and it is the same for each splice plate connection here as well so we can choose this this there are four different configurations now we stay on this and uh, see again maybe we can use here only one uh, bolt column so we reduce the number of columns to one and we can reduce also the web uh, the, the weld length we can see that the utilization for the weld is also quite low so maybe we can uh, apply the minimum value again okay and now it's it's good it is very important that in case of gusset plate connection the gusset plate is always automatically optimized we can uh, set here basic settings for the gusset plates but the position some uh, 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 geometry for these distances and if we uh, if we change something on the connection the gusset plate is automatically uh, uh, refreshed with geometry for example if the angle of the brace is different and we can see that the gas plate is larger and larger to make it good so it is always automatically optimized because all the braces should have the same uh, uh, point okay we can see 
So these are the basic manipulations with the connections. This is quite the same as the earlier one. So now let me show you the documentation and uh, how it looks. So we push now the document here, making a new document. These are what can be documented, table of loads, and all the connections. Now we have uh, five different connections on the left flange, on the right flange, and web front two connections and web back one connection. For each connection, we have a joint geometry. We have results for each load cases now, which is only the dominant case. And these are the detailed results uh, for, for the uh, dominant load case, or we can choose only the summary. We now see the detailed result and create the documentation. This is the basic document. This is the tables. We can switch here. So this is the uh, uh, first page with the title, model, standard. This is the content, table of loads. And now we can see from connection to connection all the results starting from the joint geometry and the connection geometry inside the joint. The load case, which is dominant for this connection, if we have more load cases, and then the detailed results. And it is the same for the moment and plate connection. Of course, here we have larger results. This is the web front. This is the tension bar. And finally, the web back connection. So this is the documentation for the connection. Uh, OK. And what we have left is to show you the uh, structure connection interaction within the, the Consti software. So this was about the Consti joint software, which is a model of Consti, but we sell it separately as well. And now I show how it works inside Consti. So I open the model. I uh, prepare the hole with the podium. And uh, we have load cases, load combination. We have analysis results. We have lots of things. And we have several joints placed to this uh, uh, structure. What I would like to show you how it works this interaction. So maybe I want to create a joint, a complex joint here. Then I can use the create joint by model functionality in which I have to pick up the node where I uh, would like to uh, place a joint. I pick up this node and then it is identified in this node, we have a column, we have a beam, and we have three other uh, bracing elements. We can uh, choose these types of connections here. We choose now this one. The next stage, it is automatically identified that on the column, we have one connection on one flange and two connections on both sides of the web. So we have to now define the connection types. So for uh, the flange, we select this one. This is we can see that this is the uh, uh, hunched uh, hunched uh, beam. So maybe moment and plate connection would be appropriate. And for uh, for the gasset plate connection, we can choose these ones. For the other, we have only one here. And then we create the connection. We have here, what is very important that everything is coming from the global model. So the angle of the beam, the, the uh, uh, column cross-section, beam cross-section, the geometry of the hunch, and 
the angle of this bracing connection, the cr other cross sections of this bracing are coming from the model and then the same is applied as I showed you in constant joint. With the default arrangement we get these values. The next stage is that we have this uh, and we have to check this connection to the uh, uh, loads what we earned from the global uh, calculation. So we push this place button. We place back this configuration to the global model. So we push here and we have a no new joint here including several connections as we see. So four different connections in one joint. And now with end joint placement we finish it. We can place this joint if we have the same configuration to several positions in our global model and now we can see the results. What we can see that the loads are automatically imported from the model. We have now calculated three combinations we can see here. Uh, okay, we can see here the combination results with the appropriate bending moments and internal forces and all these results are coming to here and the dominant one is picked up for each connection and it is evaluated for them. We can see that it is slightly not adequate and uh, we can uh, we can just quickly improve it. Maybe first I I take it down a little bit. Okay, then some quick manipulation to have a real uh, joint. Okay, maybe apply two stiffeners here and maybe quickly apply Okay, now it's adequate, only the weds are wrong maybe the linear stress distribution, yeah now everything is good in our connection so I quickly repaired it, we can see here all the details and now we have a ready connection and what I would like to show I save this okay now it is placed back to here and uh, in the analysis we can evaluate again the model and the joint stiffness is automatically accounted for in the global analysis and it is taken into account not only in the uh, uh, first order calculation but in the backlink calculation as well and one more topic is that if we have placed connections like we have in this model a lots of placed connections then we can use uh, special export to Tecla structures and even to SUCAD. I will show you how it works. Now we have opened an empty model in Tecla and I would like to now uh, export the whole model including all the placed connections to Tecla. I choose the export to Tecla structures I have to select the object. I select all of them, pick a reference point which can be this point and push the export. Uh, there are uh, the names maybe for Tecla I have to change the name of this run bar but all the other names are automatically identified. Okay and then pick the reference point in Tecla structures. 
So then I go to Tecla, pick a point, and then we can see that the whole model is first uh, with the elements are exported, and then all the uh, joints, all the connections are exported. Uh, I now look for the connection. What? Yeah, this is the connection what we uh, identified and created now with this end plate connection, with the uh, compression post connection and the tension bar connection. We can see that all the connection components are automatically taken to Tecla, filling the appropriate uh, Tecla uh, macro with all the wet sizes and all the boards, the grades, the plates and everything in the right place. So if we use an accurate model in our calculation software in Constil and uh, define the correctly designed and checked uh, uh, connection, then the whole connection can be automatically, uh, and the whole model including the connections can be automatically taken to Tecla. And these connections are now already checked. So uh, this was the webinar. Uh, if you have any question now, I unmute maybe all of you. Unmute all. If you have questions, then uh, we have uh, we have time to uh, uh, to answer it. Okay. Then if. Uh, if no question, then uh, we uh, finish this uh, webinar. Thank you for your participation. And uh, I hope it was useful. And maybe I show you our web page. On our web page, you may find uh, lots of additional information, including videos, uh, uh, manuals and uh, lots of information about Constil and Constil joint software. Uh, you may download a tryout version with full functionality and you can try out. So thank you for participation. Bye.